Um, before, before break, uh, Alexa Bium will uh, be discussing, uh, hopefully I got that moderately close to right. You did. <laughs> uh, the extremes of the IMF variable. Hi, thanks for having me today. I'm a grad student here at Santa Cruz, and like Mike said, I'll be talking about the IMF today. So while most studies that probe the IMF from integrated light have focused on massive early type galaxies, I'm more interested in the smaller, lower mass systems that I collectively call compact stellar systems. Now, as you can see in my color coding of the objects on this plot, in relatively recently, there's been um, an explosion in the diversity of the types of uh, uh, stellar systems uh, uh, that we know about and um, and this is it's important to understand the properties of these systems because they have you know especially ultra compact dwarfs UCDs and compact ellipticals have um, muddled our once clear distinctions between things we called clusters and things we called galaxies. The importance of this was discussed at length on Monday. You know, for one example, we don't expect star clusters to have dark matter, but we do have that expectation in dwarf galaxies. So if we want to do proper accounting, we have to have, um, you know, reasonable, robust measures of what is a cluster and what is a galaxy. And as you can tell from this plot, especially with distinguishing globular clusters from UCDs, making the kinds of magnitude and size cuts that we used to make is now arbitrary. So what we really need are physically motivated distinctions. And Right now, uh, the only way to tell if a UCD is more of a galaxy rather than a cluster is through the detection of a supermassive black hole in that UCD. The idea being that some fraction of UCDs are stripped remnants of larger galaxies. However, that's an extremely resource intensive task. You essentially need an entire night of AO per object. And even then, you're limited to bright nearby objects. And so with these limitations, and also because of the fact that not all UCDs have supermassive black holes, only three UCDs so far have kinematically confirmed black hole, supermassive black holes in them. And so we really need another way of looking at these objects in an attempt to uh, distinguish them, uh, make distinctions between them. And so, you know, in addition to uh, these problems, uh, there's also um, open questions about the dynamical properties of uh, compact stellar systems. So here, I'm uh, showing uh, the mass to light, uh, dynamically determined mass to light ratios for M31 globular clusters taken from Jay Strader's work. And you can see a distinct uh, decreasing trend with metallicity in these clusters. And for comparison, I've put a 10 gig year SSP with a Krupa IMF. And so you can see that this trend is not predicted from the, stellar popu the conventional stellar population models. Um, and the reason for this is still an open question. And additionally, many UCDs also show elevated dynamical mass to light ratios uh, from uh, over the predictions from st conventional stellar population models. And so, you know, as I said, this is still an open question about what is driving these dynamical properties. And uh, one thing that has been put forth as a possibility but has yet to be rigorously tested is, you know, the possibility of a variable IMF in these systems. And so uh, this is what I and my collaborators have been working on, is conducting a pilot study measuring the stellar mass to light ratios of these compact stellar systems using um, stellar population models that allow for a variable IMF. So uh, the models that I used are an extension of Charlie Conroy's models, uh, the detailed descriptions of which are in various papers, uh, but uh, to be succinct, we fit a two power law, uh, two component power law IMF in these objects with the breakpoint at uh, half a solar mass. And so here I'm showing uh, just a summarizing plot of the results where um, on the y-axis, I'm showing uh, the IMF mismatch parameter. It's essentially a measure of how much the mass to light ratio deviates from the expectation of a Krupa IMF. And I'm showing this uh, for 
of three M31 globular clusters, a UCD, M59, UCD3, and M32. And here I've got it as a function of metallicity, and here on the left I've got it as a function of magnesium abundance. For the sake of comparison, I've also put the early type galaxy data from Peter Van Dockum's paper of this year. These are points for six massive early type galaxies, um, uh, local values as a function of galactocentric radius. To me, what's striking about uh, this figure is how much the uh, compact stellar systems deviate from the trends established by the early type galaxies, but in different ways. So the M31 globular clusters are at or near a Krupa IMF, while M32 and M59 UCD3 show elevated mass to light ratios, but off of the main trend established by the early type galaxies. And so I was talking about the need for a new metric of distinguishing uh, UCDs from globular clusters. And this is suggestive that this might be a way to probe separate formation channels. Of course, this is uh, just a pilot study, so uh, obviously we need more objects to make rigorous claims of this, but it is something worth pursuing with more objects. Uh, but furthermore, we can go back to the dynamics and see to what extent a variable IMF can help explain the dynamical properties. And so here I'm again showing a uh, the uh, figure of the uh, dynamical mass to light measurements for M31. And now with this time I'm showing the stellar mass to light measurements that I've made. And we can see that a variable IMF helps, but not completely. Um, so, and there's still tension at this high metallicity end with the models. And uh, you can do some simple estimates to see that you'd actually need a pretty uh, uh, wild IMF to explain these lowest mass, dynamical mass to light ratios at the highest metallicity. And so this actually puts nice constraints on uh, the possibilities of explaining the dynamical mass to light ratios in M31. Uh, however, M59 UCD3 is very nicely consistent with the dynamical measurements. Uh, so uh, this is important as we go further and study more UCDs and try to understand their properties better, uh, because if we want to start, you know, especially making uh, estimates of, of black hole size in UCDs where we're unable to get uh, kinematics on these, it's important to be able to know that we should take into account the possibility of a variable IMF in these objects. M32 is uh, doing its own thing in this parameter space, which isn't a surprise because M32 is a very different object than most uh, UCDs. So uh, I'm putting my conclusions up here, and also I'd like to say, you know, in addition to what I've spoken about today, um, this also provides uh, additional constraints for people who are attempting to explain what drives IMF variability. Um, but of course, we need more data. So thank you. Showing if we go back, uh, yes. simple stellar population. But oh, I know less about other clusters than DK. But if I learn something on Monday, is that they're right? They're not simple stellar population. So if you try. Yeah, that's certainly a possibility uh, that could have some effect. Um, but I think the main driver of these trends that we're seeing um, is the IMF, but there is the possibility of abundance effects uh, changing it. And I'll point out that my stellar population models do fit for abundance patterns as well. So that's included in those measurements of the, uh, in my stellar mass to light ratios. Uh, well, I would say that, you know, we have unexplained dynamical properties, and in some of these instances, you know, where we fit 
uh, full spectrum models, we do see that we can fit for a very, like a variable IMF gives the best fit for the data and can to some extent explain the dynamical properties. Um, so I don't, I can't comment beyond what I heard from Phil's talk yesterday, but you know, I don't see why I would doubt those measurements at this point. So in uh, globular clusters, uh, that is an issue to be taken into account um, where, you know, through di mass segregation, you are losing your uh, lowest stars. Um, however, I mean, so before I go on with globular clusters, that really isn't expected to be a problem in UCDs because UCDs are massive. And of course, some globular clusters are also massive enough for that not to be an issue. In the globular clusters that I've chosen in the sample, they are um, fairly massive globular clusters. So we're not worried about that. But in addition, uh, you know, mass segregation can only explain so much. So these, you know, down here, these are really low mass to light values. And I, uh, did an estimate and you would basically need to have the lowest mass in your, uh, in your globular cluster to be half a solar mass to get the uh, Krupa IMF prediction down by 35%. And so that's pretty extreme. Like that, I would be surprised if that was the case, you know? So uh, it's something to think about, but I think in this case, it doesn't matter. And also it can only take you so far. Break it up.